In this lesson, we'll talk about file input and output. So the goal will be for you to be able to read from and write to files by the end of this lesson. There will be some activities that you can try at the end. Um, a lot of them relate specifically to uh, string methods, using those string methods within the context of file reading and writing. Um, other than the opening and closing and making sure you have the correct uh, arguments, the file writing really relates to um, how to use the other structures within the context of um, saving and storing information externally. So to brainstorm, um, you know, you want to think of how we've been making data permanent. And up to this point, really, permanent means memory location within the context of running a particular program. But there are really other ways to make data more permanent. Because right now, when we create programs, as soon as we close those, the data we've created is lost. If you think about objects we've been creating or just variables that we've created, they're gone. So the state of the program always begins kind of empty. And that's not really the case that we have in the real world. If you think of any apps or programs, there's always um, some sort of information database that we draw upon to run the program or to at least have data there that we can access. And so we want to be able to kind of pick up where we left off in most instances. And in order to do that, we have to have a way to store information outside of our program. And we can do that using files. What we'll use today are basic text files. Um, you can obviously create files with different extensions and format them so that you know they can be read by other types of programs. For instance, uh, comma separated values or a .csv file that can be read by uh, Excel to create graphs. Well, we could create a text file and give it that extension, um, and we would be able to use that and interpret it in other programs. So in order to be able to operate with files, we need to be able to open them first. And this is different from what you're actually doing with them. This is simply just opening. The, the first argument gives the name of the file, and it's usually the file path. Second argument defines what you want to do with the file, and we'll get to that in a moment. So open, what this does, this open um, call, returns an object or a file handle for this particular file that's open, and that's what we'll use then to do things like read and write and append information. So if we say, for instance, um, with the second argument, we can provide either an R, a W, or an A. And that means either read, write, or append. The R is the default option. So if nothing is included, we'll assume that you're reading from a file. The write and the append are only if you want to change information. Now, it's really important here. Typically, what we'll be doing is if you're opening a brand new file, you will write to it. Because if you choose the, uh, the write option with an existing file, that data will be overwritten. So the append or the a argument is the one to use if you want to tack on information to the end of a, a file that already has information there. So if you're thinking about a database and you're storing information for users, the append option is what you'll use to make sure you don't erase previous data. So let's go ahead then and, and open this up. There's a, a paragraph.txt file that I'll include um, near this post. What you want to do is include that to the directory that you're also going to be creating a Python file in. So you create a new Python script in that directory. And you'll call, in this case, I've just called mine unit four lesson two action. So if I open up this folder, you'll see here I've got this paragraph.txt file. Now, my file is called actually just action unfinished. And if we open that up in PyScriptor, we can see that this action unfinished, this just got the header comment. Um, and all I've done here is I've opened up paragraph.txt. So the file path because this is in the same location as the Python file, it's simply just paragraph.txt. It's in the current folder. And I'm going to open this for reading. So this paragraph.txt file has, of course, some text in it that I'm going to read. If I open up what that looks like using a text editor, it's just a paragraph of information. So that's the file handle, my file. And now what I can do is I can take this file handle and I can do some things with it. So I've already opened it up for reading. Now let's see what we can do. Well, reading data from a file. There are a few options that we have. We can read by byte. We can read the whole file. Or we can read it line by line. So the read method will read the whole file into a string. And it will take and return that file as a single string. Now to do that, we would use the file handle that we created. In this case, input file, and use the dot .read extension to put that into a string called entire file. Now, we could also specify the number of bytes we'd like to read. 
more often than not in case everything you're going to do here in the course you won't need to do that but what we will use actually is this read line function and this is probably the one that you will use most often so this is reading a single line from the file so we'll see what happens here if I open up my paragraph.txt I've got this file handle called my file and if I use uh, my file dot read line I'm going to print that to the screen whatever I have and so when I run this oh, let's see I must have made a small mistake here I think I used a capital L in read line as opposed to a small L let's make sure I change that that's the problem there we go read line all lowercase there we go and now we run this what I can see here is the first line from the file being read now this is the first line because it's recognized the new line character at the end and so I only get the first line that's how the read line function works it recognizes that new line character or if someone's hit enter in the file now notice what happens if you try to read another line from the file so let's just take this statement and include it a second time it's interesting to see what happens here because in fact you've kind of got a current position in the file that's being remembered here by the file handle because when you print it a second time the read line command generates the second line of the file so it has remembered that it, it had kind of finished off at the end of the first line and now when you call read line again you can think of it as that cursor location has uh, then recognized the next line at that point so the read line option keeps a working memory of where exactly in the file it's currently sitting now the other thing here is of course if we tried reading the whole file we could do the same thing and instead of calling the read line command we could simply call read so the option is if we have the entire file that we'd like to read we can read the whole thing at once get rid of the extra bracket and run this and now I would expect to see the whole file and that's what I have here so reading very important to remember that the read line command